Hi, so we're going to solve for using inverse tra trig, which means we're going to solve for the angle that matches with our trig ratios. So uh, I'm going to solve for x here. So I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm going to do the sine of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Sorry, the sine of x, there we go, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so remember that x is the angle as your input, and the output is the ratio of sides. So how do I isolate or how do we undo this equation to get the angle by itself? I'm going to use the sine inverse. The sine inverse of 7 over 25 is equal to x. So the now the sides, the ratio of sides, is the input and the angle is the output. Okay, I'm going to use my calculator. For this problem, I'm going to go ahead and use degrees mode. So I'm going to use the sine inverse of 7 over 25. Gives me six about 16.26 degrees. Okay, so x is about 16.26 degrees. The number one thing today is that we're going to remember that the inverse trig solves for an angle. All right, so we're going to find the inverse of the following. Right now, my x is my angle and my y is my ratio. So if I want to, wow, okay, let's. So if I want to solve for my angle, I need to use inverse trig. So I'm going to use x is equal to the sine inverse of y. Okay, so the angle is equal to the sine inverse of y. x is the angle, y is the ratio of sides. Okay, cosine, again, angle, sides. So I get the angle is equal to the cosine inverse of the sides. Okay. Lastly, angle. Regular trig uses the angle as the input. The tangent inverse, the input is the angle or the sides. Oh, yeah, the sides. So that's y in this case. So the sides come down here and the angle gets isolated. Angle, sides. You can use any letters you want, really. Okay. All right, so another way to write um, trig in, like inverse trig, is using, you either put the negative one right there, like, so that the thing that is being inverted is, well, it's saying that that's the inverse function, okay? It's the inverse of the function. It's really confusing, so a lot of times we just write arc sine. These are the same thing. Same with cosine. Arc cosine. Oops, brassy. Of x. Okay? And in, in this case, is x an angle or a side? Or the ratio of sides? It's the sides because the input to an arc cosine or inverse trig function are the sides. Okay, so arc tan means inverse tan and the x again mean the input is the are the sides. Okay, what this is not, which we always think it is, is 1 over the tangent of x. That's wrong. That would be 1 over the tangent of x would be the tangent of x to the negative 1, like that. It's dumb. I know. That's why we, we write arc tan. Okay? All right, next up. This is not 1 over the cosine of x. Boom. Not the same. This is not 1 over the sine of x. Nope. It's just something separate. So what we would say is arc sine or inverse sine. Okay? All right, so we are going to figure out about these principal values. So your calculator only gives you 
one of the angles that could make your equation true. And that one angle is going to come from your principal, uh, it's going to be the principal value or the print from the principal quadrants. Sines principal values come from the first and the fourth quadrant. And they are going to look like negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So in other words, if you use your calculator to get your answer, your angle will only be between the domain of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's it. Okay. This one, for cosine, the principal quadrants are, or principal values, come from the first and the second quadrant. Because I'm looking for when the cosine ratios are positive and negative. So the first quadrant has cosine ratios that are positive, and the second quadrant is where the cosine ratios are negative. So right here, our answers are going to be between 0 and pi. Lastly, tangent is just like sine. Our principal quadrants are between um, quadrants 1 and 4. We're looking for two quadrants that have one with positive ratios and one with negative ratios. So our answers from our calculator are going to be between negative 2 pi, or sorry, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right, so what is a principal value and why do I need them? It's because, like, for example, sine looks like this. Okay, and I want to know when will, what angles will give me an output of one half? So I'm going to look like one half right here. Looks like there's an angle right there, an angle right there, an angle right there, an angle right there. If this graph gets extended out backwards, I have an output of one half right here, one here. Did not draw on the scale. Sorry. So there are many, 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 many different angles that make this equation true. So there are a lot of answers. But we're going to restrict our graph so that it only passes between negative pi over 2 on the x to pi over 2. That way, we only have, that way the inverse of this function is a function. Okay, so we get one consistent output every time, and that one consistent output is going to be, is going to come from this little region right here, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Then, all the rest of these answers, we have to figure out ourselves. Okay, cool. So, principal quadrants, or principal values. I always call them principal quadrants. Okay, principal values are the value in inverse trig. It's where it's the answer your calculator will give you. It's the answer from the restricted domain of the graph. So just this little bit is the domain, okay? Uh, between zero and pi. That's the restricted domain for cosine. Between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that's the restricted domain for tangent. Okay, so we're going to try these. We're going to do this in our calculator, even though we can do this because these are common ratios. That's okay. All right, so the sine of 1 half, we're going to go, let's see if we can, okay, so the sine of 1 half, we want to solve for our angle, so I'm just going to be like, yeah, x is the angle, 
This is my ratio of sides. So if I want to solve for the angle, I need to use the inverse sign. The input needs to become the ratio. And that means that the x is going to be the angle. So when I solve for this, um, to, and I'm using, we're just going to find the principal value. This is the value that comes from your calculator. So second sine inverse of 1 half. 1 over 2, close your parentheses, and I get 30 degrees because I'm in degrees. Okay, So x in degrees is equal to 30 degrees. Let's pretend we're in radians real quick. Actually, let's just go to radians. Okay. And I will just run the same thing again. And I get 0.52, but I'm not really happy with that number because I know that this is going to be like a pi over something. I'm just going to divide out pi to get the fraction. And then I'm going to math, enter, enter. And I get pi, 1, 6. So 1, 6 pi. So this is pi over 6. Or you can just look at this and be like, 30 degrees, that's pi over 6. Okay? Next, tangent of 1. So to find out the angle, and then this is the ratio of sides. So the tangent of 1, the inverse tan of 1, is equal to the angle. Okay, ratio of sides. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator, inverse tan of 1. And then I'm going to divide out the pi since I'm in radians. And I get 0.25, so pi over 4. So x is equal to 1 fourth pi, which is pi over 4. And then as degrees, remember that's 45 degrees. Now notice this is the only the angle that's coming from which quadrant is 45 degrees in? This is in the first quadrant. Actually, let's just write Q1. Okay. Is 30 degrees in the first or the fourth quadrant? That's going to be in the first quadrant. Okay. All right. So cosine inverse, cosine inverse of 1 half or 0.5. And then we're going to divide out the pi. Divided by pi gives me one third, so pi over three. So cosine inverse of the sides is equal to the angle, side, ratio of sides, angle. So x is an angle is equal to pi over three. Yeah, pi over three, which is 60 degrees. Okay, and that is right, because when I think about the unit circle at 60 degrees, my cosine ratio, my x ratio is one half. Okay, so is this first, second, third, or fourth quadrant? This is the first quadrant. So now we're going to go back to our notes and... We need to figure out, well, wait a second. Isn't there a whole nother quadrant where the angles are, where the ratios are positive? So we just figured out the sine of x is equal to 1 half. And so we found an angle from the first quadrant that works, which was 30 degrees, right? So at 30 degrees, we have a sine ratio of 1 half. So I'm going to look here and be like, yes, right here at pi over 6, I have a sine ratio of 1 half. So is there any other place besides quadrant 1 that the ratios are, the sine ratios are positive? So remember, we can use our old friend, all students take calc. And I remember that the other quadrant that sine is positive in is quadrant number two. So we're going to call this the secondary angle. Um, 
I can see that sine is positive in the second quadrant at 5 pi over 6. So we can say a secondary angle, another angle that works is 5 pi over 6. And what quadrants did that come from? Quadrant 2. Okay, so sine has two answers for ratios that are positive. Ratios that are positive will come from the first or the second quadrant. What about sine ratios that are negative? They will come from the fourth or the third and the third quadrant. Okay. Um, and then we have to think for a second, like, okay, so there's two answers for every ratio, two angle answers for every ratio. But actually, what if I said, is pi over six the only angle that is in the that's going to lie in the first quadrant that's going to give me a ratio of one half? Mm -mm. What about a coterminal angle? So adding 12 pi giving me 13 pi over six. Oh my gosh, yes. So we also have coterminal angles. Okay, so, so all of our coterminal angles. So let's start with quadrant one, which was our principal value. We had x is equal to, right here, x is equal to pi over six. And then for our coterminal angles, we say plus two pi n, where n is any integer. Okay, so if I, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, from quadrant two, so that's one answer. From quadrant two, we had x was equal to 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n for coterminal angles. So this 2 pi n takes care of my coterminal angles, and then again, it's the same where n is in any integer. So whole number, whole numbers, positive or negative. Okay. And this, these two, um, these two equations give us all the possible answers that, possible angle measures that would give us a sine ratio of one positive one half. I know. It's crazy. Okay. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks really quick before we start solving some for realsies. Okay. So tangent. We're just going to look at all students take calc really quick. And we're going to remember that the principal values come from the first come from the first and the fourth quadrant. So if right now in tangent, um, tangent ratios are positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant, and they're negative in the, fo uh, the fourth and the second. So if my ratio is positive, it's going to come from one of these two quadrants. If it's negative, it'll come from one of these two quadrants. So the principal values. Okay, so the equation for um, the, if x is the angle, we're going to get some sort of angle from our calculator. I'm just going to call it theta. Okay, plus 2 pi n. Okay, um, now across from, let's call this a one half and root three over two. So if I have negative one half and root three over two, the nice thing about tangent is that 
the two answers that I get are always supplementary. They're always 180 degrees away from each other. So I can just add 180 degrees to get to the next answer. I can add 180 degrees to get to the next answer. So for this, for tangent, we actually don't use 2 pi n. We just say plus pi n or plus 180 degrees times n. So depending on if you're in radians or degrees. Okay, so we don't need a secondary equation, whatever um, your principal value is. That's what I should write instead of theta. I'm going to write the principal value from your calculator plus 2 pi n. So the principal value, again, comes from the first or the fourth quadrant. All right, so sine, it, its principal values also come from the first or the fourth quadrant. Sine is positive in the first quadrant, it's positive in the second quadrant, and negative in the third and the fourth. So if I have an answer, if I have an, a principal value in the first quadrant, then I am going to have to have a secondary equation in the second quadrant. Likewise, if my principal value is in the fourth quadrant, then where will you also have an equation where sine is negative in the third quadrant? This is how we get these answers. You go um, x is your angle, or your, your input is equal to the principal value plus 2 pi n. And that takes care of, this part takes care of your coterminal angles. Okay. For the secondary equation, so either from the second or the third quadrant, we use the same equation. It's going to be um, pi, so 180 minus the principal value. Okay, that'll give you your secondary equation plus 2 pi n. Or if you're in degrees, 180 degrees minus the principal value plus 180 degrees n. Again, the part in yellow takes care of the coterminal angles. So all of this takes care of coterminal angles. Okay? All right, next up, cosine. So cosine is principal values are in the first and the second quadrant because cosine is positive in the first quadrant and the ratios for cosine are positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second quadrant. They are negative in the third quadrant and positive in the fourth quadrant. So if I have an initial principal value, that end up in the first quadrant, the nice thing about cosine, so your calculator, the prime principal value is going to be from the first quadrant or the, or the second quadrant. Your calculator will tell you exactly what the value is. And then I'm going to have to just add the 2 pi n for all of my coterminal angles. Okay. For this secondary equation, notice Your secondary equation is just a reflection of the triangle from the from the first quadrant. So this angle right here is just negative your principal value. That's it. So to get the second set of answers, we do negative your principal value plus 2 pi n. And again, those take care of your um, coterminal angles. All right, so the steps. We isolate, all right, this is gonna make no sense at all, but we're gonna do a bunch of problems to, to highlight how to do these because it's like, it doesn't look like a lot of steps, it's a lot of steps, okay? So first we're gonna use inverse trig to solve for our input. Then we need to find our principal values and then add two pi n. And then we're going to calculate the secondary quadr um, secondary value just like we did um, using the rules I gave you. And then add 2 pi n 
And then sometimes we have to do steps four and five where we like, maybe there's some more isolating we need to do. And then if your equation gives you a domain restriction, like negative two pi is less than or equal to X and is less than two pi, then we actually have to list out all the possible answers. Right now, from steps two and three, that will give you all possible solutions if there was no restrictions on your graph. Okay, so I am gonna pause there and we're gonna do examples next.